trust. It's all the rage now, especially with a leading zero, yet confusion abounds. I'm Steve Riley, field CTO at Netscope. I'd like to take you on a short journey that'll clear away the confusion and put zero trust in perspective. Implicit trust was pervasive in early network designs. In fact, some of the original internet protocols, which we still use today, weren't designed with security in mind. Corporate networks were self-contained, and the internet's reach encompassed only a few sites where everybody knew each other. Trust wasn't a problem back then. But now, the internet is no longer trustworthy, and corporate networks are routinely penetrated, largely because they're all connected to the internet. Traditional network designs struggle to cope in hostile environments. Services exposed to the internet can still be attacked, even if authentication is required. Attackers will send malicious commands to the exposed service to see how it might be forced to misbehave in ways that are beneficial to the attacker. This connect then authenticate paradigm just doesn't work well anymore. What if we inverted it? That is authenticate then connect. Attackers can't harm what they can't see or find. Yes, contrary to popular belief, obscurity can be a useful aspect of an overall security strategy. Also, what if we evaluated signals and the context surrounding all access requests and interactions? Things like device health, time of day, day of week, and the sensitivity levels of the data. These ideas aren't new. Starting a couple decades ago, various flavors emerged. The Jericho Forum promoted deparameterization. I wrote and spoke about the death of the DMZ. Forrester introduced zero trust networking. Google developed BeyondCorp. Gartner introduced Continuous Adaptive Risk and Trust Assessment, or CARTA. In all cases, the goal is to grant the right entities the right access to the right resources at the right times for the right reasons. These two fundamental changes allow us to construct an individualized perimeter containing only the user, their device, and the desired destination. They stop lateral movement and they shield services from public access. You're likely asking, if this is all so great, why has it taken 20 years to catch on? Inertia. The traditional paradigm wasn't sufficiently broken to justify the work that a paradigm shift demands. When the COVID pandemic forced many workers to go home, traditional remote access very quickly strained under massive loads. Ordinary VPNs struggled, and the problem of too much implicit trust finally materialized. Early zero trust models still evinced a network-centric approach. But as the world moved from one data center to many centers of data, along with workers everywhere except the office, a resource-centric approach became necessary. For two entities to interact, some level of trust must be established between them. And the context surrounding the interaction must be evaluated to determine that level. Here's an example. If Alice is on an unmanaged device, she receives read-write access to public content, read-only access to sensitive content, and no access to confidential content. If she's on a managed device, she receives full access to all content. If her device later exhibits signs of compromise, her access is instantly revoked. Zero trust is only a starting point, no trust at the beginning. Once certain conditions are satisfied, a certain amount of trust is extended based on context and content. As context and content change, so does the amount of trust. I like to describe this as continuous adaptive trust. Some of the latest proposals, including those from NIST and CISA, emphasize this continuous adaptive approach to evaluating trust. Zero trust isn't something you buy. It's a mindset, a collection of principles, a strategy. It aims to eliminate implicit trust and replace it with explicit trust, typically mediated by some sort of broker. It's probably what the original designers of the internet would have chosen if they had anticipated how the internet might have evolved into what it is today. This is how to enable safe interactions in hostile environments, which means just about every environment these days. Thanks for watching.